What's happening y'all? Alexander with guns.com and today we are going to do kind of a full review and breakdown of the Sig Sauer M400 SDI X series. Talk a little bit about the design of the gun, the function, how it shot, and why this might be my favorite factory built AR. Today we are going to do a breakdown of the Sig Sauer M400 SDI X series and a little bit on the Tango MSR 1 through 8 optic. And as a little bit of a bonus, we have the Silencer Co. Chimera 30 cal can. Uh, I did run this rifle at about 2,000 rounds, and about half of those were suppressed because uh, suppressed shooting is really popular. Big shout out and thanks to Silencer Co. Uh, to kind of review what I think is a really good universal can to throw on a bunch of different things, but we'll get into that. First off, we're gonna discuss this M400. The SIG M400 series dates back several years. Originally, when the firearm kind of first came out, it looked like the traditional Block 2 M4, fixed front sight, carbine length gas system, style of AR-15. A little bit later on, SIG developed the Treadline, which was very customizable. You had a free float a uh, handguard, in fact, there's a tread right over here behind me uh, that you can kind of look at for comparison. You had the mid-length gas system. Um, you could throw different styles of handguards on there to accommodate whatever kind of shooting that you had lined up. Later into that series, there was a little bit of a desire and a need for a competition rifle. And inspired by Daniel Horner, who is one of the shooters on SIG's competition team, the D M400 DH3 came out, which had a big muzzle brake on it, a little bit of a heavy profile barrel, uh, a kind of skeletonized custom competition stock. And the lower had a bunch of different features that were uh, an upgrade as opposed to the traditional tread. And in that kind of realm, SIG decided that they wanted to take all of those upgraded features from the DH3 and move it into a tactical rifle that could be used for duty use, tactical shooting, home defense, things like that. And thus the M400 SDI X series was born. Now, we're gonna kinda go over the features from tip to butt, talk about all the things that I like about this. A couple of things that I think SIG could have done a little bit better on, um, but ultimately, let's get into it. Starting off here at the end, we're gonna discuss the muzzle device. Now, I actually have the tread uh, three-prong flash hider mounted on here, um, but the gun originally comes with this Compensator flash hider combination. I think that this muzzle device does both jobs uh, to a mediocre level and uh, I just don't think it excels at either thing. Personally, I don't think that 5.56 rifles need compensation. Uh, it's almost reminiscent of something like the M14 flash hider uh, with these compensation holes at the top to kind of push the recoil or the gas down a little bit on the rifle. The rifle had this three chamber brake on it for the majority of the shooting. Again, not a huge muzzle brake person for ARs. I don't think that you need to tame 5.56. Five, but I will say something I learned when I spent a little bit of time with uh, Gym Tech learning about their new suppressor series uh, when they were doing their testing between the quick detach on the, the pronged flash hiders and the muzzle brakes. The muzzle brakes actually lasted for like four or 6,000 rounds more than, uh, than the pronged flash hider. So it was better for the cans or the life of the cans to have the muzzle brake. So got that and that's probably what I used for about half of the shooting with this Chimera. Moving back from the muzzle device, this uh, barrel profile is a little bit thicker than something like a pencil profile. It doesn't have those cuts that you would see on something like a traditional you know, M4 block, the 203 cuts. And to be honest with you, I think a lot of companies have gotten a little crazy with the profiling and the weird you know, changes in thickness in the barrels. This is very consistent all the way through. It's, it's basically the same barrel from the front all the way to the receiver. 
Uh, the other thing is it's a mid-length gas system. I've talked about this before, but I like mid-length gas systems in 16-inch barrels. Carbine length gas systems were designed for 14.5-inch barrels. Um, and when you get into a 16-inch barrel with a carbine length gas system, it's much more harsh on the receiver. That recoil impulse is a little bit more violent. And the mid-length is just smoother. It's better for the life of the gun. And big props to SIG for making that change with the tread and all of the subsequent kind of models. So big fan of that. The handguard is a free float M-lock handguard, but you do have that Picatinny top rail for mounting your optic. Maybe you want to put like an IR laser, you can put backup iron sights, you can do a, a flashlight, whatever it is, foregrip. I left this fairly bare bones. I didn't put a lot on there. The one kind of detractor that I have from this rifle is the sling mount or lack thereof, really. Uh, I like the SIG MCX a lot. I like the design of the receiver and the rail has integrated quick detach points for a sling. Uh, it's great for a two-point sling, but they're also in an optimal position for a single-point sling. And this rifle really lacks the sling attachment points. I did install this BCM QD uh, attachment point so that I can run two-point or one-point. You have another sling attachment point at the rear on the stock. I think it's a little too far back for uh, a single point sling and it's the only you know attachment point so unless you add an accessory onto the gun uh, you can only run that single point from the rear of the stock either with the clip or the, the QD mount. Uh, so adding that one attachment was the one thing that I did do to this and a little bit of a ding on the overall design. Moving back from that we're going to discuss the lower receiver and the features that it has that it brought over from the DH3. Um, everything on this is ambidextrous and sometimes I feel like rifles get into the ambidextrous realm and it's, it's cumbersome. I don't think it's well thought out. It's just like we threw stuff on there so that it's ambidextrous and in this case I actually think that the positioning of everything is, is very well kind of put together. So you have your magazine release right on the bottom side of your traditional bolt, or bolt hold open bolt release. So that stays the same, but you can also eject the magazine from this side if you are a left-handed shooter. You have your traditional safety right here mounted on the left side, really set up for right-handed shooters. Then if we spin this around, you also have your traditional magazine release. It's a little bit extended. It sits behind this kind of skeletal buildup on the lower so it can't be bumped or actuated, but it's perfect length. You know, you just extend your trigger finger, press down on that, you can eject the magazine. And the other big thing here is that bolt hold open. Uh, a lot of times there'll be things like the bad lever that'll run through the trigger guard uh, and you can actuate a bolt from either side of the rifle with that using your, your trigger finger. I'm not a huge fan of doing anything inside of the trigger guard unless you know we're, we're shooting and putting your finger in the trigger guard can just put you in a compromised position. What SIG did here is you have this lever that just sits right basically above the uh, magazine release and you can actuate your bolt hold, op hold open and bolt release from there. So I'll show you, lock the bolt back on that magazine and all I have to do is put a little bit of downward pressure that bolt goes forward very easy. Uh, you don't have to put a lot of effort into it. And like I said, I think it's very well thought out, very well set up. From there, we have the pistol grip. Um, you'll see this with a lot of companies. They kind of go with their custom grip that almost mimics the handgun series that they're you know, putting out in this case. I think this is very reminiscent of like a P365. It has a much better grip angle than your traditional AR-15 grip. It doesn't have that weird kind of finger rest that just gets in the way on a lot of AR grips. Uh, I do like it. There's some texturing. You get a good kind of purchase on it, especially if your hands are sweaty. Um, and then from there, the next part is the trigger. One of the most important parts of a rifle, especially if it's going to be a little more of a premium rifle or a well thought out rifle, I expect it to have a good trigger. I can't remember, but I want to say that SIG advertises this trigger at around five pounds, five, six pounds, somewhere in there. I think it's closer to about four and a half pounds. It's a really light trigger break. There's not a lot of take up on it. The reset is short and sweet. In fact, we're going to go ahead and ghost this trigger. 
So like I said, there's very little take up. You just put a little bit of pressure down on that trigger. You know, you have a couple millimeters of play. You hit a very, very clear wall and you just put a little extra tr pressure on there. That wall has a really clean break. Then you let forward just a tad on the reset. It's a very positive reset, clicks, you can hear it. You're right back on that wall, just a little bit more pressure and it breaks again. And again, that short reset. The trigger kind of has a little bit of a flat surface. Uh, I like flat triggers a lot. I'm, I'm a little more kind of tuned to that than what a, a traditional curve trigger offers. You do have a little bit of curve at the bottom, but as far as like kind of that surface area for your finger, I like the flat trigger in the SDI here. On to the upper part of the receiver. One thing that is also ambidextrous is the charging handle. That charging handle can be actuated from the left or from the right side, doesn't matter. You can see there that it will release. It has the latches to kind of let go of the receiver on either side. Moving on to the top of the receiver, we have the Sig Sauer Tango MSR 1 to 8 optic. Uh, it's an LPVO and I actually really like it. I don't have a ton of experience with LPVOs. Um, I, like I said, I have about 2,000 rounds through this rifle and I actually was a big fan. I felt like the one magnification, it was really easy to do both eyes open styles of shooting. Um, as well as when shooting out at distance. I, I didn't take this too far out. I took it out about 300 yards, but being able to kind of go to the eight magnification is great when you're looking at shooting at anything from distance. Uh, it holds zero really well. Um, it's kind of a solid, it's, it doesn't add a ton of extra weight to this. It is an illuminated reticle. So if you want to shoot during night, you can illuminate that reticle or, or low light visibility. It's an etched reticle. So I don't personally feel the need to throw like backup iron sights or anything on the gun. Um, it's got those kind of BDC marks on the, uh, on the breakdown of the reticle. Uh, overall, I was very pleased with it. I think it's a great optic. I think it's kind of perfect for that 16 inch barrel um, design. I'll kind of get into that a little bit more in a minute. Uh, moving to the rear of the gun, we have the last kind of feature, which is a Magpul SL buttstock. Uh, I like this because the SL is a popular, it's a sleek, comfortable buttstock. You don't need to go make a new part or do something that's proprietary, uh, just using something that's readily available and, and very well liked on the market uh, is just a solid option going with, with the Magpul. That is the rifle overall. Now getting into the shooting part of this, uh, I put about 2,000 rounds through this. It was steel case, brass case, some 223556. Um, I got some Tula, some, let's see, Barnall, some PMC, some Fiocchi, uh, Buffalo cartridge, a, a wide range of ammunition. I even just grabbed some handfuls of 556 that I have at the house. There were so many different um, styles, brands, a couple of different grain weights. I did run some 75s through here, uh, some Australian Outback 75s. Uh, I, I ran a lot of 55, 62 grain, 556. But overall, the gun functioned really well. I'm a huge believer in not like doing any maintenance or oiling to the gun right out of the box. I expect when I buy a firearm from a reputable firearm company that they're going to put their best foot forward in that firearm. I expect it to work well and, and reliably out of the box and the M400 did just that. I have not oiled it. I have not cleaned it. Uh, the reason for that is when I'm doing something like this, I want to do a review. I really want to push the rifle to a little bit of an edge, see how long it's going to run before I run into issues so I can kind of know what the threshold is. Um, for a typical kind of duty use situation. And with this particular one, running about a thousand rounds suppressed, it got really dirty. In fact, you can see here on the bolt, she is absolutely filthy. I can run my finger uh, across the bolt and there is a lot of carbon buildup. And again, it's not that I don't care about the rifle. It's not that I'm not going to maintain the rifle. I will but I really want to run it uh, as long as I can to see when it's going to start running into problems uh, so that I, I kind of know what the, you know, limit or the edge that I can push this rifle to. 
I did not have any malfunctions through those 70 or 2,000 rounds. So I'll take that back. I had one malfunction. I had a split uh, casing he or rim from a, a barn all round, but I think that's more of an ammunition problem, not something indicative of the gun. Uh, so outside of that one hiccup, I did not have any gun-related malfunctions. The rifle performed very well. Accuracy-wise, I did shoot at no magnification at 100 yards to kind of see what we were working with. I was hitting about, I don't remember, it was about one and a half to two and a half MOA, um, which for me is perfectly acceptable. I'm a huge believer that most firearms are capable of much higher feats of accuracy than I am capable of. Um, the biggest thing is just training on the rifle and getting as much time on it as I can and always improving. I think this is capable of much more accuracy than I am and just spending the time getting to know it, running through drills, those follow-up shots are super easy. You know, you can get double taps, triple taps, whatever it is. Whatever drill you're running through, the trigger reset is smooth. It's very easy to control the rifle. Moving a little bit in a different direction to discuss the suppressor here from Silencer Co. I did run a lot of rounds through this suppressed and I ran this rifle with a very high like volume of fire. Uh, it got very, very, very hot. In fact, you can see that the finish is kind of worn off of this can. I love the look of kind of a worn, worked can. Guns are tools, cans are tools, and uh, you know, you gotta kind of get some scratches on there to show that you've done some, some solid work with it. Um, but this particular uh, setup with the Chimera 30 cal, it's not a 5.56 cal suppressor, so it's not as quiet as it could possibly be, but I really like this as kind of a universal can. Um, you have these mounts, and Silencer Co. has done a great job at making these very affordable. So, you know, you can take something like this, you can buy three, four, five, ten, however many guns you want to throw the suppressor on. You can go back and forth between 5.56, five, 300 blackout, you know, maybe even 6.5 Creedmoor, something that you've got going on that's a little bit bigger than that 5.56. Five, this is a great universal can to throw on different platforms, quick and easy. You know, it's got a couple of revolutions in that muzzle device, then you just lock it down, uh, but you don't have to worry about, uh, <clears throat> you know, buying a bunch of different suppressors to leave on certain rifles that are direct thread, the, the QD nature of this, and like, that, like I said, the 30 cal universi universal use out of it is really awesome. Getting into the performance, I ran this, like I said, really hot, really heavy. Um, I was doing a lot of just rapid fire drills, quick reloads. Uh, there were a couple of times when I was several hundred rounds in without giving it any time to cool off. The, the suppressor ran very, very well. I was very impressed with it. There's a little bit of back pressure that you're gonna get. Anyone who shot ARs uh, knows that it's kinda like tear gassing yourself while you're shooting a lot of times uh, with a lot of different suppressors that are out there on the market. That's a little bit of the nature of the DI action of an AR. With this one, I did feel a, a reduced back pressure. It's not, not there. There's still a little bit of gas getting in the face and tearing up a little bit, but I think they did a really good job of eliminating um, at least that heavy back pressure that can make long-term shooting or shooting drills, whatever it is, difficult when you can't see because you're just, uh, you're crying basically, right? Um, the weight of the suppressor is really solid. Overall, this, this whole rifle is very light. I think it's a little over six pounds. Um, the suppressor does not add a, a bunch of weight. There's a lot of really heavy cans out there. Uh, this one's, I don't know, one and a half, two pounds, somewhere around there, but lends itself really well to being mounted on something like this. Didn't feel like it was too front heavy. Uh, adding on this LPVO in the can. I kind of put this rifle in the recce category, something that you can carry for long periods of time, whether it's hunting, hiking, whatever it is uh, that you have going on. It's very comfortable, easy to kind of move around with, and adding something like a can is not gonna overly weigh the firearm down. I've shot this in the snow, uh, heavy, heavy snow in Minnesota. I literally threw it in the snow and left it there for about an hour, pulled it out, shot it for a while. Um, lately, especially the past few shooting sessions that I've had with this, it's been 95 to 100 degrees outside. 
gotten this really hot to the point where I couldn't put my hand on the hand guard hardly at all without gloves and even very you know warm through the gloves and it's just performed flawlessly. I like the 16 inch barrel. There's a lot of people out there who don't. I think there's a lot of advantages in having a 16 inch barrel. It's not too long. You can throw something like the Silencer Code Chimera on there uh, without feeling like the rifle's too long. You get that extra velocity out of it that you would get out of a 14.5 or an 11.5, something like that. Overall, very pleased with this gun. I think this is just a really well thought out rifle. The features of the M400 that were brought over from that competition, uh, as well as just the overall design purpose from the Tread series, uh, I think SIG's done a really good job of moving this design into more of a, a high level premium feel. And I think this gun competes against firearms and ARs that are $1,000, $1,500 more expensive. I think this definitely gets into the realm of Wilson Combats, uh, let's see, BCMs, you know, some of those high-level BCMs. I definitely think this is better than like a, a Daniel Defense, uh, and it's less expensive. You get a lot of features for this. I think the accuracy, the quality of the build, uh, SIG's just done a really good job with a standard kind of DI AR. Uh, and outside of a couple of adjustments, 90% uh, of this rifle I would not be going to replace. I think it's really solid. I'd add maybe a foregrip and a light for something like duty use. But outside of that, it was a pleasure to shoot. Uh, it was a lot of fun, very smooth, and I am overall impressed with the SDI X-Series. Thank you for checking out this full review of the SIG M400 SDI. As always, we are a huge brand partner with SIG Sauer. It's a great company. In fact, if there's anything on their website that kind of catches your eye, there's a buy now option that will redirect you over to guns.com so you can purchase it. We also have a huge selection of new and used SIG firearms here at guns.com. And so there's always something for all of your wants and needs in your collection. Thank you again and be sure to like, share and subscribe.